Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I just want to discuss with you guys if it's worth it to watch Spider-Man Lotus. Today Gavin announced that August 10th will be the release for Spider-Man Lotus, the full movie, and that August 5th will be the day you can go to, I believe it's Los Angeles, and go watch the film like with Gavin and I think some of the cast and get autographs and pictures. Now, if I'm wrong to where that premiere is going to be, I do apologize. But yes, you guys can go see the premiere. It's like first come, first serve. And I think it's going to be cool. I'm going to try to go because I want to meet Gavin. And I think his work is phenomenal. Of course, what just popped up on the screen is me just saying that I really do love what they're doing. And basically saying congratulations to them. And I did say that Warden was... And will be always one of my favorite Spider-Man ever. He's on my top three Spider-Man. Now, he did put on his story, which was cool. I posted a little thing on my story. Then he posted it. So it was pretty cool. But let's get on with the topic. Is it worth it to watch Spider-Man Lotus? And what can you get out of it? Now, of course... Watching Spider-Man Lotus will gain you nothing. Maybe you might see a good film that you really, really like, and you think it's one of the best fan films there is, or you might just dislike it because you went into the movie thinking it's going to be bad. Now, of course, there are some pros to watching this film. This film is based off of the comics and some of the movies that have already come out with Toby, Andrew, and Tom. It's more based off the comics of right after Gwen Stacy dies and the trauma Peter goes through. Now, it's not exactly like that, but that's how I see it and what I've gotten from Gavin when I've watched his videos. Alright, so some pros are the villains. Shocker and Green Goblin. A pretty good combo if you ask me. I don't think they'll be teaming up, but I do know that Shocker will have a fight with Spider-Man in the middle of the movie or maybe towards the beginning or the end I have no clue that's just what I saw from the trailer and it seems as if Spider-Man's gonna fight him towards the middle of the movie because the final battle will be of course with a battle damaged Spider-Man but he will be fighting the Green Goblin now guys quickly don't forget to subscribe like the video and turn on your notifications it would really mean a lot to us because we're going to be releasing so much more Spider-Man content coming your way on this channel. The Amazing Amigos, the other channel that I have been working on with my buddy Michael, that's both of our accounts, will be releasing so much content. We are teaming up together to do Pizza Time and The Amazing Amigos, which is a dream of mine because I've been wanting to do YouTube for so long and I'm finally able to get back into the game. But again, just subscribe, comment, like the video, and just turn on your notifications. We love you all. Now let's continue. Now, another pro for the movie. Yes, there's going to be swinging scenes, fighting scenes, and what we have seen in the trailers and the VFX released from the film, it looks phenomenal. Now, of course, the Green Goblin fight was leaked, I think about maybe a year ago or six months ago. I have no clue. I just remember it was fully leaked and it did look good, except it was in early stages of being edited. So people were making fun of the goblin and how it just looks horrible and the costume doesn't look too good when I thought it actually looked pretty good. Now, a lot of people do not like that they chose the goblin. I don't know how that makes any sense because Goblin is one of the best Spider-Man villains there is. Now, of course, there's a small chunk of people not liking the Goblin. Of course, that's your opinion. If you don't, okay. But my opinion is I love that the Goblin is the final battle villain. It is so amazing. Now, one of my favorite parts in the trailer and the little teasers they've released are the battle damage suit and the swinging scenes. The swinging scenes look, honestly, as good as Tom Holland's does, maybe a little bit better. A lot of people really just say it's all CGI and VFX. Now, honestly, you can't really say one of them's worse because they both look good and I love it. 
Now, of course, the battle damage suit for Peter is something that I love in every Spider-Man film. Now, of course, you know Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland have all had battle damage suits, but Tobey's will always be my favorite in the first one when he gets his full suit battle damaged because you can just see a lot of the skin. You can see damage on his face, some blood, and it just I think it looks amazing. Now, can Spider-Man Lotus actually turn out to be good? Yes, if you go into the movie thinking it's going to be good, and you just give it a chance, yes. But if you go into the movie automatically saying, oh yeah, it's a fan film, Gavin had problems in his past, oh yeah, they were shown, oh, it's going to be a bad movie, you're not going to like it. Now, Gavin does, you know, he had problems, there was controversy, Warden, you know, they all had problems, but that was their past. High school selves, everyone has a past, and if your past was shown, I believe that you wouldn't like it, and it'd be the same way. Everyone's done something bad, so just go into the film liking the film, okay? Just enjoy it. It's a fan film. Of course, it's not a million dollar film. Now, of course, in my opinion, it looks like a million dollar film. That's what I'm going to think it is. I'm going to go into the film, watch it on my big TV, and watch it and enjoy it thinking it was professionally made now of course you know gavin in my opinion is an amazing director and i think he can pull it off really well like i have said before warden is one of my favorite spider-man i think he's gonna do an amazing job gwen stacy i don't know the actor of gwen in this film but she's beautiful i know she can do the part because look at her in the trailer she just looks phenomenal she can fit gwen and there's not a lot you can do for dead Gwen Stacy. Unless you go in there and do an amazing Spider-Man 3 by reviving her. But no, that's not that's not what's going to happen. That would be funny, but no. Now another pro I want to let you all know is that Harry and Peter are still friends in this film. And I feel like throughout the film they're going to have a struggle between their friendship. And a lot of fans love that between Harry and Peter. And I think it can really work if you guys just give it a chance. There's a lot of pros. Now, some cons are it's a fan film. A lot of people do not like fan films, but it's a fan film. Okay, just enjoy it. It's another Spider-Man film. Spider-Man fans are eating well. In my opinion, not a lot of people like The Flash. I like The Flash. Okay, the new movie released of The Flash, nobody really liked it. I loved it. What I have heard from the people I know and some of the people on YouTube, they love it too. But there's the critics, okay? Now, there's not going to be a lot of critics for Spider-Man Lotus. Or it might just go the opposite way and there's hundreds of thousands of critics watching this just to say it looks bad. I do want to see, though, if Rotten Tomatoes is going to have something to do with this film because there are some fan films on Rotten Tomatoes that have given them scores, they don't look too good, but, you know, Spider-Man Lotus looks like one of the best fan films I have ever seen. Now, the question for this video is, is Spider-Man Lotus worth the watch? Yes, it is very much worth the watch. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope to see you guys in the next one. I love you all. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, turn on your notifications. I'll see you guys in the next one.